All right. We are uh, turning our attention to the text today. Uh, so again, blessed to have uh, all of you are here. I see some uh, of the Cal alums are in the house today. I guess there's been black back to school stuff and, and so good to see a few of y'all here. Amen. And uh, Eric, why are you waving? <laughs> Ooh, you thank God for the special ones too, praise God. No, <laughs> no I'm just playing. It, we're so glad to have <clears throat> have you here. It is always a great blessing to see uh, so many of the, the students from Cal as they matriculate through and, and just blow up and become these fascinating, wonderful, uh, very skilled folk out in the world, and they stay in love with Jesus. And for me, uh, that's probably one of the greatest gifts uh, we are able to have as a church is that we get to uh, watch our students grow and pursue uh, God's divine purpose for them, but they don't forget God, and they stay in love and in touch with all that God is doing. So let's clap it up for all the Cal students and all, all of them that are here in the house today. Just know that the way is so blessed by you, and uh, you are all a great encouragement to our hearts. Uh, we're going to Hebrews chapter number four, uh, as we are going to, for the next few weeks, launch a series or do a series on prayer. Uh, for many of you that uh, may be somewhat new to church or trying to figure out what does all this mean and how do we indeed have a, a, a vibrant life uh, of, of fellowship with God, uh, we must continue to be reminded that our ministry and our work uh, in the kingdom of God, in the work of God, must always be grounded in communication with God. And uh, it is virtually impossible to be able to, to uh, do the work that God has called you to do. It is impossible for you to deepen your own spiritual vitality. It is uh, impossible for you to kind of have a sense of what God would want you to do if you're not talking to God regularly. Amen. Somebody say regularly. Some of us need to talk to God irregularly. Amen. Meaning like a lot. Touch your neighbor, somebody. Amen. So we we're gonna we're gonna take some time to to, to talk about prayer and uh, you know imagine over the next few weeks what does it look like to pray. So I I I'm thinking that we'll start with some persuasion because I want to maybe uh, imagine that some of us need to be persuaded to pray. Amen. And then uh, we'll we'll hopefully talk about uh, some ways to pray and. Uh, and even perhaps talk about the results of prayer over the next few weeks. So uh, turn with us in, in, in Hebrews chapter number four. Uh, it, it should be on the screen, hopefully. Uh, Hebrews chapter number four, verse number 14. Uh, and uh, I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version, I believe. E e oh, I think that's the, that's some version, amen. So why don't I go with that, since that's what y'all reading. Uh, since we... Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. Somebody holler, hold fast. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. So let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us say thanks be to God. So we'll speak today on prayer, most specifically why we should pray to Jesus. By your hands with the Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to bless the word of God that has been read for us. The people of God, I ask you to hide this word in our hearts so we will not sin against you. And please send your anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. Let it rest upon me and even the hearers of this word. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, you better pray. You better pray. Now, there is an old hymn that I love. Uh, we, we don't sing uh, some of these hymns as much as we probably should, and that may be a good, a good uh, challenge for us is to integrate some of these, these hymns and songs from uh, our, our, our uh, most immediate past, if you will, into some of our 
liturgy and worship because these hymns speak in a way that uh, I think help you and I to hold on to some of these truths that for many millennia have helped us uh, be more faithful to God. But this old hymn, it says, What a friend we have in Jesus. All right, sound like somebody know that hymn. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything. Somebody say everything. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything. Somebody say everything. Everything to God in prayer. I want to ask you, what are you not carrying to God in prayer? Because the truth of the matter is, my brothers and sisters, that we always, uh, you know, are able to pray about those things that we feel like may be out of our ability to solve. But could it be that even those things that are within your power to solve, you still are forfeiting a privilege to carry that to God in prayer? I mean, keep it real. What can you really handle in your life? Mm -hmm. uh, I know we all, some of us in here, you know, we're very high capacity people. So we feel like we can handle almost anything that come your way, come my way. But how many know even the mundane, regular things, someday you like, Lord Jesus. I, I know I'm supposed to go to work today, but I, <laughs> I just went yesterday. I, 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 know I, I know I'm supposed to study for this thing, but I went to class three out of five times. I mean, how much more must I do? You know, I'm supposed to love my kids, but Jesus, you don't have the kids I have. I mean, anybody ever been there before? Amen. Let's talk about some real talk. Things that are just normal. You have it in the course of your life, and yet you don't take those things to God in prayer. One of the greatest, I believe, uh, gifts we have as followers of Jesus is the opportunity, the open door to talk to Jesus whenever we need to. I mean, we use the word prayer, and often when you say prayer, you know, I think we, we have all kinds of images that pop up in our minds about what prayer must look like and how we must sound. O thou creator of heaven and earth, ruler of the universe, the, the mountains were formed by your pinky and the, 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 the waves, they were formed by your uh, sneezing. And, you know, I mean, we, we got these formulas. Anybody ever, ever, ever felt like you, you find it intimidating to pray? Anybody? All right. I mean, it's so fascinating because, you know, uh, all of us, we, we follow Jesus and we are supposed to pray regularly. But when you're in a group, isn't it interesting you ask somebody to pray and everybody puts their head down? We need somebody to pray. And it was... <laughs> and I feel like, Lord, have mercy. Shouldn't it be a privilege? To talk to Jesus? I mean, think about this. You get to talk to the one who was there before everything started. The one who holds it all in his hands. Now, I know how that could feel intimidating. And I think for many of us, you know, we, 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 we struggle to pray because sometimes we think we're not worthy to talk to God. Because, you know, we know our dirt. We know our struggles. You're like, Lord, if I start talking to you, you may, you may talk back in a way I don't want to hear. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. 
So, 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 so it's important for you to appreciate a few things about prayer. First off, prayer is nothing but communication with God. Prayer is nothing but communication with God. And, and you have to uh, uh, strip yourself, disabuse yourself of this idea that in order to pray, you have to pray a certain kind of way with certain kinds of formulas and certain kinds of words. All you got to do is talk to Jesus. Be like, I, these folk getting on my nerves, Jesus, and you better get them. Ain't no just saying, get them, Jesus. Amen. Just, you better get these folk because if you don't get them, I may have to lay hands myself. Praise God. I want to give them these hands, as the kids say. So, prayer is your opportunity to talk to God, not in, in the course of, 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 of just in worship or when you're in the church building, but you should pray all the time. The scripture says that we should always pray and not faint, not quit, not grow tired. Now, that don't mean you walk through the day, oh, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I just want to thank you. Hey, how you doing? I just want to give God the glory because, God, you've been so good. God bless you. God bless you. been so good to me. What you need, Mr. Boss Man? Okay, I I'll answer that phone in a second. And, Lord, I just want to ask you to bless this, this, this boss. Stop talking to me while I'm trying to pray. And, you know, and you, that, that's, not, <laughs> that's not what he's talking about. But prayer should be you keeping a scripture, a song, a, a, a reflection, keeping your mind focused on God and on God as the solution and God as the answer. Prayer should be a lifestyle. Your life should be a prayer. Wouldn't it be interesting if everything you did everywhere, you offered it as a prayer to God? God, I want you to bless the world through my life. So may let every step I take, may it be postured in this, in this desire to pray. Now, appreciate that, that there is then always an opportunity for you and I to have focused time to pray. So, you know, I, I, I believe praying always and, and, and having your mind constantly uh, inundated with the, 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 the words of Scripture or some of these songs that, that remind you of the goodness of the Lord. And then sometimes you need to block out everything and, 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 and get in a posture where you have some time with God. I'm talking about every day. As soon as you wake up, you should roll out of your bed before you check Facebook, your stocks, Sports Center, uh, the Today Show. I know some of these 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 babies they make it hard for you because they come and roll you out the bed. Amen. But sometimes you need to just put them on their knees, just real hard. You're going to pray this morning. Amen. Pray that the devil does not sift you like wheat. That's what Jesus prayed. You ought to pray that over your children. Amen. Pray that over yourself. Amen. Every day you ought to have some time to pray. And because many of us don't get that opportunity because our lives are too busy. We have prayer time here at the way. So you can, on your way home from work on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, stop through here and have some time where ain't nobody going to bother you. Ain't nobody going to be trying to distract you. There'll be other folks here praying. Some folks will be walking praying. Some will be sitting praying. Some will be laying on their face praying. Some will be kneeling praying. Some folk would come and pray for you. But you'll have some devoted time to talk to God. And my brothers and sisters, it is so important for us to talk to God because you can't be in a relationship with those you don't communicate with. So if the only time you're really talking to God is on Sundays as God is hopefully speaking through me to you or those moments when we're in worship and we're lifting our hands and the spirit is connecting or those time in worship when we're praying, if that's the only time you're talking to God, 
that's not enough. I mean, can you imagine if you only talk to your partner once a week for about an hour? That, 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 that would be some kind of relationship. I don't mean no harm. I hope that's not what's happening anywhere in here. Cause I just got the sensation like we asking people to pray and folks start going like this. Like. Tell your neighbor, hours not enough. You got to spend some regular time with those that you say you love because if you don't, you could drift far apart, particularly because in the work and ministry that God's called us to do at The Way, we out here not just living to live for ourselves, but we out here doing all kinds of acts of justice and mercy and, and ministry. And if we're not in prayer and communication with God, even our acts of justice and mercy and ministry could cause us to veer way off. And we can get lost in doing works and forget to cultivate relationship with God. Give your neighbor a high five and tell him, you better pray, you better pray, you better pray. There's a lot at stake if you don't pray. And we come, uh, many of us, out of the Pentecostal tradition. And what the Pentecostal tradition is, is so wonderfully known for, uh, among many things, is Folks would spend hours in prayer. And I'm talking about hours, and I'm talking about hollering and screaming. One of the one of the one of the 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 the, the brothers I, I was talking with, he he uh, grew up in a Pentecostal church. He he didn't he wasn't in a church like a uh, Pentecostal church anymore, but he said, In my church, we yelled loud at God just to make sure he didn't miss what we were trying to say. Man, it's like, you know, and, and, and it's, a, it's an expressive, a, a verbose, and it's usually just a few words. Lord, I need you. Having prayers and words of praise and thanksgiving on our lips. And we will pray and pray and pray and pray and pray for hours at a time. And particularly during the time of Azusa Street, when the Great Revival fell uh, back in 1906, they would go to work, then go home, get changed, come to the prayer meeting, pray all night. Go home, take a nap, get back up and go to work. And they repeated that the revival went for three years or so. And folks were just spending time immersed in talking to God. And, and what's so interesting about the prayer that they were having is it did not paralyze them or make them free from doing action, but prayer made them more active. And I want to submit to you that if prayer is paralyzing you from doing anything, meaning you can't Love your family. Love your community. Take care of your responsibilities. I want to argue that's not the prayer that God's asking you to do. Prayer should animate you. It should activate you. It should cause you to begin to have the heart of God. Because many of us pray and we think that prayer is going to change God's mind about something. I'm going to pray and I'm going to change God's mind. No. Prayer helps you to pray, learn how to pray according to God's will. So rather than changing God, prayer changes you. And how many be honest say, I need some changes in my life, amen. We need some changes in our community, amen. So prayer helps you and I get, get closer to the imagination of God. Because you and I got our own ideas. How many of you know your own ideas? You wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't invest in them yourself half the time. I wish I could talk to somebody. Amen. But God, I want to have your mind. I want to have your thoughts. I want to care about what you care about. I want to love folk the way you love me. So the reasons why you and I should pray, very simple. The first thing the text says is that Jesus is a high priest 
who is unable or we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect was tested as we are, yet without sin. The first reason you and I should pray is because Jesus understands. Somebody say he understands. Prayer is such an important part, particularly praying in a way that takes for granted or at least acknowledges that I am praying to you, Jesus, because you understand what I'm going through. It's great to pray to Jesus and not have to, like, give him a whole lot of background information or try to convince Jesus of the, the seriousness of the situation you're in. I don't know if you ever talked to folk and, and you, you, weren't try, you weren't really hearing them and they weren't really hearing you. I remember I used to have these sports conversations with folks and we would always talk about was Kobe uh, uh, better than Vince Carter at the time or Allen Iverson and you sit there and y'all just go back and forth and everybody have all these opinions or were the Lakers better than, than the, I don't know who, because they beat up everybody when they was winning, but who, who like who's some folk? Uh, uh, were the Lake, Lakers better than the Warriors, amen. That wasn't really a, a conversation back in the day. Or, or, or was, was, was good times better than the Cosby show? Anybody ever had that conversation? Or, or did Denzel look better than Flavor Flav? I don't know so if you ever had those kind of conversations. And, 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 and they just not feeling what you're saying. It's like you speak in one language and they're speaking another. Doesn't that leave you frustrated? You leave away, I'm never talking to you again because you just don't know what I'm saying. But that's not what it's like when you come and talk to Jesus. He knows and understands not only what you are trying to say, but he also knows what you're going through as you are communicating. And this is the distinction uh, that Christian faith has from any other religious tradition that Jesus knows what it's like to be forsaken. He knows what it's like to be threatened, to be poor, to have power, to have no power, to, to be without friends, to live in a dysfunctional family, to live in an oppressive society. He knows what it's like to suffer, and Jesus, the one you're praying to, even knows what it's like to die. And all of that that Jesus knows, Jesus stands as our great high priest. So when you pray, you're not praying to someone that you got to give a whole lot of information about how you're feeling. Because Jesus can go back in the recesses of his own memory and remind himself. Lord, this is what it was like when I was hungry. This is what it was like when I was forsaken. This is what it was like when my friends who I thought were going to be there with me walked out on me. This is what it was like when my family totally just abandoned me in my point of need. When you pray, Jesus understands because he's been there before. And the scripture also says that he's experienced every single temptation that you've experienced as well. So think about this. You are praying to someone who knows the intricacies of what it feels like to be depressed. You're praying to someone who has the eternal riches of glory, but he also knows to be broke as a joke. You're praying to someone who knows how, how it feels to not know where you're going to lay your head at night, but also knows that God is going to make a way out of no way because God has always done it time and time again. He understands what it feels like to see his own people being cheated and oppressed, marginalized, with no visible solution. You're not praying to someone who is just so out of touch, but you're praying with someone who incarnated himself into the misery of our world. So you can have a lifeline of understanding. And the best thing I love about Jesus, even when you pray the wrong thing, Jesus understands what you meant to say. 
You're like, that's okay. I, I, I got this. Hello, somebody. Aren't y'all glad about that? Amen. Because some of us are praying for a whole lot of things. And Jesus did a quick intervention. Said, no, you don't, you, you don't mean that. You don't mean that. You mean this. And Jesus helps us to be in a position where we're praying and learning to pray according to his will. So one of the first things you got to wrestle with, my brothers and sisters, is how are you learning to pray according to his will? Not your will. Of course, we all got things that we want. I got all kind of things that I want and I, I love to see happen. But sometimes I am aware that that's not God's will. That God has a calendar. God has a time. And I wish sometimes that God's time would line up with my time. But sometimes God can see the whole thing. And we just see what's in front of our face. Anybody ever got something later than you thought you wanted it? And then when you got it, you was like, Lord, I thank you didn't get that to me back then. I thought I was ready for that back then. I'd have squandered that thing back then. When you don't have nothing, you feel like it's the most in Lord, this is, I, I'm just falling apart. God, I need you. Please, God, do it for me right now. And you realize that, you know, you still made it through. And God gave you what you needed when you needed it. Give your neighbor a high five and tell him, Jesus understands. Jesus understands. The next thing the text gives to us this morning is found in the first half of verse 16, where he declares that we should boldly approach the throne of grace. How many know that Jesus gives you and I access? Somebody holler, Jesus gives us access. Since Jesus understands, he hooks us up with an all-access pass to God. I don't know if you've ever had an all-access pass to something. Where, where you, you see everybody standing in line. Amen. And everybody is like, you know, out there and they wish they could get in. And you just walk by like, hey, what's happening? You know, I, I'm, you know it's like, well, who, who are you? And you just flash your pass. I got an all-access pass. That means I don't have to stand in nobody's line. When I need something, I can just cut to the front of the line. Give your neighbor a high five and tell him I got an all-access pass. Some of you better start using your all-access pass to God. Because this all-access pass will help you not only get to the front of the line, but you also get to see what's happening behind the scenes. Ooh, Jesus. Some of us, we so caught up with what we can see with our own eyes. But God sometimes will give you a glimpse. I love it. I, I, I used to say it all the time that sometimes we could be going through so much trouble in our lives and, and we feel like God has forsaken us. And sometimes God will just shine a little light of glory. It's almost like God's winking at you. God saying, I haven't forgotten you. God saying, I'm still on your side. God saying, I'm not going to leave you nor forsake you. God's giving you an all access pass. And when you learn to pray, and give everything to God. You get the access to being in the presence of God, to being strengthened by God. This access gives you the opportunity to see all of what God is doing. I, 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 I be so blessed, you know, because I, I can be in situations sometimes and, and sometimes I can be filled with despair about what's happening. And, and sometimes I can feel like, Lord, what is going on? And, and then I just remember God saying, you're not talking to me enough. You're talking too much to, 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 to the politician and too much to, to the revolutionaries and too much to, to, the, to the media and too much to, 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 your, to, your, to your homies and them. But you need to spend a little bit more time accessing my presence. Because you, when you access God boldly, how I many know you have the opportunity to get some face time with God? And I'm here to tell you, there ain't nothing like being in the presence of God with boldness. 
being able to have some confidence that, God, I can come boldly. I don't have to shrink. I don't have to be timid even when I, I've made some mistakes and, and I've, I've made a left turn when you said right. I can still show up with boldness. Why? Because you are my high priest and you are interceding for me. You're interceding for my family. When I'm overtaken by human weakness, I can still boldly come and know, God, that you're not going to reject me. That you're not going to leave me without a witness, without a word. Prayer helps you to continue to be reminded that God is working. God is moving. And if I have access to God through Christ, I never have to worry about not having enough. Because God, Lord, have mercy always has more than enough. My access to God means that I have access to whatever God has. So if I need some more peace, all I need to do is use my access pass. If you need some more joy, all you have to do is use your access pass. If you need more courage, all you have to do is use your access pass. If you need more peace, all you have to do is use your access pass. If you need to have more vision, all you need to do is use your access pass. If you need more love, all you have to do is use your access pass. And in the presence of God, God will give you what you need. Our families are, 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 are needing the, the, the power of God to hold us in these moments of terror and despair trial and tribulation. Living in this Bay Area, boy, it has got to be the most anti-family place in the world. Because you got to work every day, all day, just to make your ends meet. Do I have a witness in here today? And, 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 and sometimes... You and I have to learn to trust that, God, if I have access to you, I'm going to prioritize bringing my family into your presence and trust that the 30, 40 minutes we spend in your presence, you will make up the difference. Hello, somebody. God, you'll make up the difference. I'm not just going to work myself and my family to death. God, I'm going to trust that if I prioritize you, spending time with you in prayer, God, I know you can and you will make everything work out for my good. Pat yourself on the chest and say, I've got some access. I've got some access. And, 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 and let me say the last thing that, that I believe should convince us to spend time in prayer it's because Jesus gives us some solutions. Somebody holler, he's a solution. He's a solution. Verse 16 says that we should come boldly. Why? So we can get mercy and find help in the time of need. Now, when we're talking about Jesus providing a solution, it's critical to start with the ultimate solution that we're in need of. Because more than cars or houses or material needs, sometimes you and I are in need of a spiritual solution to the things that we're dealing with. We need God to, to remind us that the root of our problem ain't the, the, the person across the street. It's not the person on your job. It's not even the person in your house. But it is about you having the mercy and the help of God when you are in need. Mercy and grace. How many know that mercy and grace, if you don't get nothing else from God, you want a good dose of mercy and grace. Theologically defined, mercy is the special and immediate uh, 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 gift that, that re re allows you to, to, to have punishment you deserve be withheld from you. Somebody holler, I need some mercy. That means... You, you ought to be punished, but mercy withholds the punishment. 
Grace is the undeserved, unearned love and favor of God. That means that when you get gifts and favor that you don't deserve. So hear, hear me when I say this. Mercy is when you don't get what you do deserve. And grace is when you get what you don't deserve. And if you can be in the presence of God getting a lot of mercy and a lot of grace, how many know you'll have everything you need? Lord, help me in here today. Lord, I, more than I want some more money in my bank account, although if you, you know, hooking a brother or sister up, I'll take some mercy. More than I want another car, another house, God, please keep giving me your grace. Because I say it all the time when we are doing an offering, God will bless you with the kind of blessings that what? Money can't buy. And I am someone who believes that I want God to do something in my life that I could not do on my own. I don't need God to, 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 to give me material things uh, because I believe and I know that in this place where we live, we can get a lot if we just did a little bit more. Amen. And, 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 and if we want to prioritize getting things, you can do a whole lot of things to get some things. But how many know there's some things that I want from God that no person can give me? There's some justice I need God to do that no politician can deliver. There's some healing that I need God to do that no doctor or no prescription or no medicine can come my way. There's some fights that I need God to fight that no lawyer or, or no, no, no police officer or no army can do for me and God when I seek your face for some solutions. I need you to work that stuff out for me. I want to be able to trust and believe that when I come to the throne of grace, God, I know that you are going to work this situation out. And I know, God, that if, if it takes a little while, I'm willing to wait. Why? Because I know you're going to give me the strength I need while I wait. Because they that wait on the Lord, he said he will renew our strength. We will mount up on wings. Like an eagle. Do I have anybody that's ever been through a situation and you felt your strength was beginning to falter and you were losing some of your ground, but all of a sudden God fortified you and God planted your feet like a root in the ground and said, you will not move and you will not backslide, but you're going to keep moving forward. Give your neighbor a high five and tell him God's going to move you forward. God is only looking for somebody who's willing to seek his face. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. God said, then will I hear from heaven. He said, then will I forgive their sin. He said, then will I heal their land. And I believe God is looking for a few folk in here who are willing to believe that if I pray and lift my voice up to God, that God, it may not come when I want it to come. But I believe that God will make it happen right on time. God, give me the strength to to call on your name before I call on Pookie, before I call on my boo, before I call on the president, before I call on the policeman, before I call on the policewoman, before I call on my counselor, before I look at my stocks, before I look at my bank account, before I go for a nice long drive. Lord, help me to pray. Pray, Lord, help me to seek your face. Lord, help me to call on your name because I will call on the name of the Lord. He is a mighty strong tower. He is.
is a way out of no way. He is my bridge over troubled waters. You better pray. Pray to Jesus. Tell him all about your problems. He'll hear your faintest cry. He'll answer by and by. Have a little talk. Have a little talk. Have a little talk with Jesus. He'll give you what you need. Have a little talk with Jesus. Let him whisper in your ear that everything is going to be all right. Let him whisper in your ear that your son will be saved. Let him whisper in your ear that your daughter is coming back home. Let him whisper in your ear that he is the one who heals your body, who saves your soul, who redeems you from destruction. Have a little talk. I feel like preaching. Have a little talk with Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and griefs to bear. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. All because we don't take it to God in prayer. Do I have somebody who's saying I will pray this week? I will pray at lunchtime. I will pray in the morning. I will pray at the noonday. I, I will pray in the evening when I'm by myself, when I'm with my family. I, I got to pray. Shout hallelujah. So now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think, according to the one who gives you power to defeat the devil, power to defeat injustice, power to defeat sin, call on the name of the Lord, and you shall be saved.